Okay, let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon even, and uh, welcome to this session on solid edge wiring and harness design. My name's Paul Abbott. I'm an application consultant, pre-sales application consultant with Siemens. And uh, I'm joined today with my colleague, James Sweetlove from 1PLM. And together, we're going to take you through the solid edge wiring and harness design portion of the portfolio. So let's have a look at the agenda. We're going to be having a look at the industry trends and the implications that those trends have got on the market. We're going to have a look at what Siemens are, are doing about these implications. We're going to be demonstrating these, uh, these solutions in a number of demonstrations. And then we're going to take you through a few companies who have been through this before and the benefits that they've achieved. And then we'll summarize what we've been through and open the floor up to any questions that you may have. So what are you going to learn during this session? Well, we're going to be creating a 2D schematic from scratch. We're going to be linking that into a harness in a number of different ways. We're going to do it manually. And then we're also going to do it via the 3D routing. All the while, we're going to be doing analysis and design rule checks and then generating reports at the end for downstream consumption. So let's start then. Let's have a look at the industry trends. What we're seeing is an increase in demand for connected customizable products or smart connected products. In a survey of our SMBs, we found that 71% of them said that the value attributed to electrical systems in their products has been increasing. And 37% of them said it's been increasing significantly. So what? Well, what we're finding is that the um, implication or the impact of this trend means that we're seeing companies having delayed, delayed time to market, errors, missed cost targets, all the things you're seeing on the right hand side. And this is due to the added complexity that has been added down to these trends. So why is this then? Well, it's because companies are trying to differentiate themselves with electronics. Whereas previously it was probably just a mechanical design. They're now looking at having a widget with a lamp in it, for instance. And people are going to buy that widget with that extra lamp. But that extra lamp means that it's adding to the complexity of that um, otherwise mechanical design. And this leads to having to comply with standards, rules, requirements, things that they've never had to do before. So their traditional manual methods of working are no longer keeping them up with the competition. So they're looking at new processes, new methods to actually achieve the result that they want. Here we see industries that are seeing that trend. Specialist vehicles, industry machinery, industrial machinery, consumer products, medical equipment, and the list goes on. This is by no means an exhaustive list. All of these pieces of equipment here have a schematic diagram that drives them. Now, this may be done manually, it may be done on a disparate system, but essentially we're creating the electrical designers will be creating that schematic diagram. A lot of these pieces of equipment here, these um, uh, that we're seeing, they're, they're, they'll also have a harness. And that harness will be created away from the equipment on a bench somewhere. Then it's brought back to the equipment 
and put into place. Now, any changes that are made to that schematic at the front end, at the front end need to be reflected back in that harness design or else there's going to be problems when it comes to getting it to work in the real world. Now Solid Edge enables us to provide a comprehensive digital twin. Now what do we mean by a comprehensive digital twin? Well, it means that we can provide solutions for mechanical design, electrical design, simulation, manufacturing, publications, and then the management of all of this data that gets created and the ability to collaborate both internally and externally with your um, uh, suppliers and customers. So Solid Edge really is the, um, the starting point for your digital transformation. An important milestone in our journey was in 2017 when Siemens and Mentor Graphics merged. This brought a wealth of electrical capability from a leader in the ECAD field to an already leader in the mechanical CAD field. And you can see here what Mark Halpern from Gartner has said about this merger. Now, like we've just said, Solid Edge is not just a mechanical CAD system. It's a portfolio of products brought to you by the Siemens Accelerator um, process which will give you an end-to-end -end solution. Today we're just going to be looking at the electrical design portion of that which is split up into five areas. We're going to be looking into the three on the left in quite a bit of detail. The wiring design, the harness design and the electrical routing. So I'm sure a lot of you are maybe have, have seen this or are still in this particular area where the traditional approach is the mechanical engineer on the left hand side works in isolation to the electrical engineer on the on the right. Now both of them are doing their jobs but they're working in silos. There's a disjoint between the two of them. They're probably using disparate CAD systems. So any changes to the mechanical design take time to get to ripple through to the electrical design, if they do at all. And the only time they join together is either over the phone or at design review meetings. So any changes late in the design cycle are very difficult to address. So Siemens are looking at a, an intelligent electromechanical system. This is what we're doing about it. We want to join the mechanical world on the left hand side with the electrical world on the right hand side and link the two together. So as one makes a change, the other one can see that change. So they're working together. As long as they're on the same network, they'll be able to uh, collaborate with each other, no longer working in silos, no longer working on disparate systems. Now the, the key part of this intelligent solution is the integrated managed electrical parts library, where you see on the left hand side, we've got the schematic symbol, on the right hand side, we've got the mechanical component. But effectively, both of these are exactly the same component. In the mechanical world, this component is positioned uh, in, in space. On the left hand side, the schematic component may be over multiple sheets. 
But as a change gets made to one, it needs to be reflected in the other. Let's have a look at how this works. First of all, we're going to be having a look at the solid edge wiring design. Now, solid edge wiring and harness design caters for a number of uh, standards, vehicle, system, ANSI, and IEC. Today, we're just going to be concentrating on vehicle design and system design. So let's go and have a look at the vehicle design. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be creating an intelligent circuit. We're going to use the, the symbols from the library, and then we're going to associate parts with those symbols to put additional additional properties on them then we're going to see how as we're starting to build this up we're using design rule checks to make sure that we've got this how we think we've got it it's right first time and then the most important part of this is the generation of the bills of materials and reports for downstream consumption so as we make changes to the schematic diagram those reports are going to get updated automatically. Let's go and take a look. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a unique project. Once that project is created, we create a drawing sheet. Onto that sheet, we put a drawing border. That border can be whatever size we want, dependent on what we need to put on it, and they can be multiple sheets. We want to place a battery into here. So we select a battery. We know where that is. We're going to go to the properties of it. We can edit these properties in here manually as long as they're unique. We can also link this with parts that are in the library. We search using filters on that library. We find the batteries that we've got and we then associate all of those properties with that particular battery that we've got in our in our design. Now this second part, this switch, we're not sure where that is in the library. So we search on the switch, we find the specific switch we want, and again, we place that in the design. There's a lamp. So where's the lamp? We find the lamp and we do the same with that. Now each one of these symbols, we want to associate that with a part in our library. So we find that part and we associate it with it. This is going to give us the correct information on our bills of materials. Now we want to interconnect these with wires. So we add a wire from a point to a point. Again, this must be a unique wire. Next piece, we're going to place a wire, but we're going to make it short. This is the design rule check. You can see here not terminating at that pin as soon as we terminate it at the pin that design rule check goes away so these checks are all running in the background as we're working we'll complete that circuit now what we're going to do is we're going to do a qualitative check this is just checking for continuity of the circuit so we can go to the different states either open and closed or error conditions and we can see that we've got current flowing around there now we're going to do a more thorough analysis of this, a numeric calculation. But for that, we need to identify what size the wires are in here. So we're going to put a 0.35 wire on those wires. And then we're going to run that again. Notice now this runs, but the wire comes in red. Why is that? Because it's taking too much current based on the other uh, parts that are in here. So... Let's first of all put a fuse in there to protect that circuit. Notice we find that part, that fuse. We can place that fuse into the line. It breaks it back automatically. And now the circuit's protected, but the fuse is blown. Tells you how long, it's blow, how long it took to blow it and also the suggested rating of that fuse. So let's go and find a fuse. Let's place a new fuse in there and update the circuit. It recalculates it, but obviously the wire is still wrong. So we need to be able to change that wire size. We go in there, alter the properties of that wire, and the design rule checks in the background, and we see that the wire is now correct, only taking 
of the rated current of the cable. Now, at this point, we can generate reports out of the out of the model, out of the um, the schematic diagram, and those reports will generate things like uh, running lists, and any changes that get made to this circuit will be reflected in that running list. Now let's have a look at, at system design. Here we're going to be generating generic blocks for those, um, those symbols and connecting them together. This may be because we're, we're looking at um, generating um, something that we're not sure what's going to go in there yet. So it, it's really just, well, we know we want, we know we want a connector. We want that connector. We're not sure what they're going to be yet. So let's have a look at this. So we're placing a connector in here, but we know what this part is. And you can see it's put all the pins in for that particular part. We know what this two way connector is going to be. So we can find the connector. If we don't know what it is, we can filter on on the number of pins that it's got and we can find that in the in the library. We place that and then we give it a, um, a designation. And then we're going to use the just copy and paste and we want to flip this over in the other direction. Again, we'll just go in there and change the designation on that to something that is more um, associated with what we want. Again, these must be unique. So we'll find a six way connector now. We'll place the six way on the bottom of here. Notice as we're flipping it around to get the orientation correct. And then we'll just do a copy and paste of this onto the other side. So now all of our components are in there, we need to interconnect it. So this time we're going to use a, a multi-connect. So we're going to pick the two pins, pick the pins on here, and notice how it does the orth orthographic connections automatically. We pick it, we pick the pins that we want, and it generates those, those wires. Now the order in which you pick those wires is quite important. So if we pick them in one direction on one and the other direction on the other, we're going to get a crossover that we see here. So left to right, right to left on the top one, we're going to get a, a crossover. Like we see there. Okay, so now we need to go and associate a particular part, wire part with that which is going to bring along with it all of the properties and the characteristics of that particular wire. Design rule checking is done in the background to make sure you can get those wires into that particular cavity that's going into that pin. So we'll continue to place the wires on here. And then finally, a quick update, and we'll get those wires shown in the colors that they're or depicted in the colors that we've, we've created them. Now we're going to put a harness attribute on here. We're going to call this harness one. Remember that because we're going to use that later on when we come to link this to our harness design. Thinking about it, there may be many harnesses in here. There may be many sheets. We've just taken uh, one sheet to create this, but all of this could be over, you know, 10, 12 sheets, and you need to be able to um, strip out those harnesses, filter out those harnesses. So that's why we've done that. And again, we could generate um, a bill of materials at this stage. We could generate a, a running list output from it, all linked back to that original diagram. So you saw there the design consistency. So everybody within your organization is going to use the same libraries. They're going to use the same style and they're going to work in the same way. You're using the design rule checks behind the scenes to make sure you get it right first time. And then the analysis to make sure that the components you use now the right components. And obviously, we need the ability to generate these um, reports for downstream consumption. And the later a design change comes in, it doesn't matter because those they link back to the original, uh, the original design. So any changes are automatically going to get rippled through into that, uh, into that report. 
So we've seen how we can generate the, the wiring design now from those libraries, both from a, a vehicle design or discrete components where we know the symbols and then applying the, um, applying the parts to those symbols. And then we've seen how we can just place a block so we can do a concept design and then later on we can associate parts to it or if we know what those parts are we can place the parts and those um, symbols will come along for the for the ride what we want to do now is look at the harness design so this is what's generated away from the bench uh, sorry away from the piece of equipment and then brought back into the uh, the design so we're going to show how we can do a manual harness and then we're going to link it to the schematic to give us all the information that the schematic can give us and the two-way link between the two and obviously as we go through this you can see a theme the report generation so here's our schematic diagram p1 to p5 so we create a unique harness design we give it a unique number. Anything that isn't unique will be shown in red and won't allow us to key it in. We give it a description so people understand what it is. Then we pick the drawing board of size. Now it may be a form board where it's the actual full size or it may be like we've got here, a scaled down version of that. Notice as we're placing these branches, it's placing the length on that branch. Where we place it, on the uh, on another node the length from the top node to that intermediate branch is also depicted at this stage and they can be changed now notice the nodes are n100 in here well it was p1 in the other one p2 p3 p4 p5 so change those to what they're called on the other diagram so this is giving you the ability to create those harness that harness information that can't be gleaned from the schematic but now rather than doing all of the rest of it manually, we're going to link this back to the schematic diagram. Notice harness one. That was what we picked and we identified it as harness one. So we're now going to filter on that harness and we're going to bring all the information from the schematic diagram into the harness. So the P1 is going to be replaced with a plan view of that 3d component you can see here and that plan view of the component has got the pinouts on it exactly where those pins are going to be when you look at the physical device if we go and have a look at the table that's by the side of that that table gives you the color of the cable the color of the um, the wire the size of the wire and what cavity what pin it's going to be associated with. We see a bill of materials at the top, and we also see a running list down the left-hand side with associated lengths of, of cables. And at this point, if there was additional information that needed added, that could be added. We can generate output reports. Here we see a, a bill of materials that's generated, and also a, a harness connector list. But if there were things like um, clips or there was some tape that needed to put on there that can also be added and that information will then get added to the bills and materials and so on that you're seeing on this diagram or output as we see on the left hand side here so you saw there that we've got the intelligence here we created it in the manually the branches manually in the in the harness design but then what we did we linked that back to the schematic to bring that information across and populated that information. So it's done once and then it's used many, many times. And those reports then are created from that information. Now in the real world, we see a cabinet and that cabinet is something like the one we see on the right hand side here. And that is the brain. So that has got the, the PLCs in there, all the controlling mechanism for the things that you see in outside of that box, such as uh, motors and pumps and um, any interconnecting devices. 
And what we want to make sure of is that when we've got that wire, that wire is rooted around that 3D component. And by rooting it, that is going to give us an exact location of where those components are. So now we can get a length associated with it and that length can then be fed back into the um, harness design and it can also be fed back into the schematic. And this is then going to give us the capabilities to start doing those design rule checks and making sure that we've got the right cables and so on. To show us this, I'm gonna hand over to James and he's gonna take us through this next portion of the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. So for this next part of the session, I'll be diving deeper into what we call the connecting mode. Unlike what Paul showed you, the connecting mode allows us to take what we've done in 2D and export it into 3D and then extract the data from the 3D route. Let's start off by looking at the 3D routing side. So for launch my model, I can access the 3D routing by going into tools and electrical routing. From here, I can then create my route by using the path tool. And I'm going to use the clips in my model to go ahead and create my path. As you can see, all I need to do is simply click on the clips and the path will be routed through them. However, the path in this regard is currently intersecting within the model. So what we can do is I can go back into my path and edit the points by using the Alt key, the same way that we can do using the 2D curve. All I'm going to do is I'm then going to go ahead and drag those points to so make sure that the path is then not interfering with the model anymore. You can then readjust these points at a later date to then readjust the length of the harness. We can then use the path tool to then build on top of our current path. So I'm going to click on the end point of that curve and I'm then going to click to place down a few more points within free space. And exactly the same as before, I can then go ahead and click and drag on these points to then readjust my path. And exactly the same as before, I'm going to go ahead and apply another point by using the Alt key, and I'm going to click to drag that away from the model. Notice how we've also got the tangency handle at the bottom of the path there. And we can use this to control how our paths transfer from one to another. We're then going to go ahead and do the same thing for the second path that's based off of the same common point. However, if I skip ahead a little bit, I'm just going to finish off this route, as we can see me doing just here. Like the last couple of paths that we've created at the top of the model, we're just going to go ahead and click and drag on these points within free space. Although, if we wanted to, we could very happily use a clip. On the subject of clips, these are actually quite useful within the harness design, and we'll get onto that a little bit later. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and accept what we've done here, and finish off the path to the model. Now we'll move on to what we call the connecting mode. The connecting mode is a fileless data exchange between solid edge electrical design and solid edge mechanical design. Data is exchanged interactively using a web-based service, which includes wiring data, connector data, and cross-section highlighting. This also allows us to connect solid edge wire and harness design and or solid edge harness design to the electrical routing on the same machine or remote machine. This also means the designers can also be working remotely as well as in the same office, which is a lot more common nowadays. So let's have a look at the connected mode. So if we open up our model, we can connect to wire and harness in the 3D by using the connect function. When I click this, notice how we've got that connected mode log viewer in the top right hand side. It's currently blank, which means that we're not connected to the electrical environment. So let's go and correct this. So if we connect some wire and harness, we can now see the connection to solid edge mechanical has been established. To which case we can then bridge out or export all of our harness design. 
And from here we can then see that we've got a really nice visual indicator of how or what's been exported. Moving back to the mechanical side, we can now see that the wires have been added using the connected mode log viewer. And if we then update our harness, we can then see everything that's being brought through along with this wire gauge, colour and where it's connecting to. Although, we can assign anything for some reason it's not come through. We've now got our rat's nest of wires, which now needs to be reated. And as you can see, all those wires have been added successfully. Using our bundle tool, we can simply route these wires just by clicking and dragging over them, and then using the paths that we created earlier to go ahead and route that through our model. We can use more than one, as long as they're connected. And when I accept, notice how those wires are then automatically snapped to that path. And we're going to do the same with these couple of wires over here. And notice the starting points are where the wires connect to. Now, if we have a harness that has a split like this, not to worry, because we're just going to go ahead and select the wires that we need, select the path that we need, and those will then be matched to that particular path. Notice how the ends of those wires are a little bit rough? Well, that's not actually that much of a problem, because the wire lengths or the bundle lengths are controlled through those paths. Now, to make sure that the wires will successfully route through our model, we can create a physical conductor. To quickly recap what we've seen so far, that we've showed you the ability to send our 2D schematic into the 3D environment, and the ability to route those wires and bundles through the model using the connected mode. Now let's see how we can use the connector modes to create a harness in our 3D route. So what we'll be looking at in this particular section is how we can create a harness design through the topology exchange of the connected mode, and how we can generate reports from this. Let's have a look. So if we go into our harness design, we're going to go ahead and bridge in the data from the 3D model, or import the data from the 3D model. Once we click on this, we have various different options. However, I'm going to keep them as the standard options for now. Once we do this, we can then see what's been imported and whether there's any errors. Although, thankfully, for this one, there aren't any. Now for this, because I've got multiple harnesses been brought through, I'm going to go ahead and delete that one, because I only need the one for now. And as you can see, I'm just going to go ahead and simply adjust the harness as to how I want it to look. And notice how it's also brought in those clips from the 3D model. Now if I was to go ahead and click and drag on one of these clips, notice how that number 4 stays the same. And that's because that's the wire length or the bundle length that's being controlled from the 3D model. So it doesn't matter how I've dragged that diagram, it will only be controlled through the 3D harness. So if I was to go back into Solid Mechanical and update that, then it will update within the harness design. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to synchronize our harness design with our wiring diagram. Now when we click on synchronize, Solid Edge will quickly synchronize them both. And then from there you can see that all of the icons and also connected lists have been brought through. However, for these last couple of steps, I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag a few of these uh, parts here, so you can see the connected list has been adjusted to fit the screen better. And this is just so that everything's nicely laid out on your diagram, ready to be printed. And now it's at the very top, we've also got a parts list where all of our wires have been brought through and the connections and also the wire size, spec and gauge. Also with the colour they've been brought through as well. However, if we fit this to the screen, all I'm going to go ahead and do is simply create a report based off of this harness. So if I go into my reports builder, I can then select the type of report that I want, 
And from here, it'll give me a nice little summary of what's involved within that particular report. I can then save this into a HTML format, or I can then implement this into a PDF. We haven't really mentioned it so far, but Solid Edge Wire and Harness Design also supports the most commonly used international standards for electrical design. These include vehicle and system design, which is what we've already seen. However, we've also got the ability to support ANSI and IEC standards as well. Also, we have the ability to support an IEC 81346 naming standard as well. So, to recap what we've seen, but we've shown you how we can use wire and harness design to quickly create 2D schematics, how we can use design rule checks to simulate our design, and how we can use the connected mode to link the 2D and 3D environments together. Moving on to some tips and tricks, Paul and I wanted to show you some of the things that we found useful for when getting to grips with solid edge wire and harness design ourselves. And these are what you can see on screen. For this, I'll take you through some shortcuts, how to edit some of the attributes in a schematic, and how we can easily filter using the multi-select mode. Now, you may have seen Paul and I using these throughout the session, but solid edge wire and harness design doesn't have buttons for certain actions like zoom and fit. Instead, they rely on what we call gestures, which I've displayed up on screen. The two we found useful are the view all and view area functions, which are the two either the top center and the top left hand side of the screen. However, there are a few others like um, undo and redo and delete selected, but they do still have the traditional window shortcut keys or a dedicated key on the keyboard already. Although, one other function that we found really useful was that if you press and held the control key on your keyboard and use the zoom area, then when you release that control key, the viewer then snap back to his original position. So here's a nice little video of that, all those gestures in action. So as you can see, when we click and drag on our middle mouse button within our mouse, then this will then zoom area or fits at all. Crosshairs. Crosshairs are a really great way to better gauge whether your cursor is in line with what you want to connect. Crosshairs are a standard feature within Solid Edge wire and harness design and can be easily enabled through the button to the media left hand side of the analysis bar on the bottom of the screen within Solid Edge wire and harness design. So looking at that again, we're just going to enable that button at the bottom there. And once you see, or once we've clicked on that, you can see that those crosshairs have been enabled. To which case, if we were to let's say go and add a pin to this particular device here, we can see that those pins are currently in line. We can also do the same thing when creating symbols as well, and also within the harness design. So these aren't all of the shortcuts available within Solid Edge Wire and Harness Design, but these are the ones that we found most useful. As you can see, we have the normal Windows functions for copy and paste, which is Control C for copy and Control V for paste. But as well as these, we can also launch commands by the press of a button on your keyboard. So as shown on the screen, wires can be easily launched by pressing the W key. Extra pins can be created on a device by clicking on the device and then clicking the P key. And as well as these, we can quickly open the options of a component by selecting it and then clicking on the Alt and key, or sorry, the Alt and Enter keys on your keyboard. If for some reason we can't find a command we're looking for, we can press the space key to launch our command finder and we can also pan our designs by clicking and holding our left mouse button for a second and then dragging our mouse. Like in the mechanical world, styles can also be used in solid edge wire and harness design to control the way our schematic looks. 
This also helps us build our designs to reflect our company standards and can be accessed in the Home tab in Solid Edge Warren Harness Design. For this, I've gone and selected a single element. Then when I go into Styles, everything that is able to be adjusted is shown in the Styles options related to that element are also highlighted blue. For this element in particular, I'm able to adjust the font, font color, and annotation style, and also the balloon style if needed. I can also adjust the way the text reacts, and also the color of the component. However, it is worth noting that editing styles within the schematic will only be done for that individual component in that single design. If you want to make a global change, your schematic or to your schematic, that will have to be done via the project preferences, which can be accessed by going into the Solid Edge tab and selecting the project dropdown. I don't have enough time to go through the project preferences today, but the options here are nearly the same as they are in styles. The only differences are that you have a few more options to choose from in the project preferences tab. And also these will be saved to the global settings, meaning that when you make a change to those project preferences, they'll be reflected in all designs going forward. The last trick I wanted to show you was the way in which we can filter our selection and use what we call the multi-select mode. With this trick, we can essentially tell Solid Edge wire and harness design to ignore other elements when fence selecting. The way we activate this is to select the element you only want to select, press and hold the shift key on your keyboard and then fence select over the required area. So if I go ahead and select this wire, I can then press and hold my shift key and then fence select to only select those wires. So before I end this session, both Paul and I just wanted to share some stories from our customers. Let's start with a company called Washtech. For those of you who have been with us for a while may remember Washtech as one of our hero datasets a few releases ago. Some issues that Washtech were facing were that due to the heavy customized machines, they needed to provide a more accurate quotes for both the machines and also determine the accurate cable lengths, which they're struggling to do previously. Based off these challenges, they adopted both the solid edge mechanical and electrical solutions, which means that they can now meet customer requirements and provide accurate quotes based off of the work that they do within solid edge wire and harness. Innovates are a Belgian based company who specialize in the production of electric vehicle chargers. Some issues that Innovates were experiencing were that they had a gap within their electrical and mechanical teams. They also needed a solution to help their designs or to help get their designs to market quicker due to strict timeframes. They were able to achieve their goals through the use of solid edge mechanical and wire and harness design. Another customer that we wanted to talk to you about is one that we, both 1PLM and Siemens, have worked with quite closely, and that's a customer called Master Mover. For those of you that have had a demo from us, will have seen or heard of Master Mover as we use them in our demos. They're also a long-term user of Solid Edge mechanical side. However, like the other customers we've mentioned, Master Mover were also facing some challenges when it came to their electrical packages. Master Mover's main challenge was that the machines were getting larger and far more complex than they have ever done before, with an expected complexity growth of 10 times. Their previous solution was also separate from Solid Edge, so they also felt it would be a good point for them to change to a combined electromechanical solution. Because of these challenges, they adopted Solid Edge wire and harness design to combine their electrical and mechanical design teams together with the ability to route the harnesses through the 3D model. And to elaborate on how Solid Edge wire and harness design is allowing Master Mover to progress forward with their development, and to give a scale of the types of projects that Solid Edge wire and harness design allows customers to overcome, they have partnered with Siemens, which is the wind turbine facility in Hull. The challenge set for this was that they needed to move a wind turbine blade that was in excess of 100 meters long and 100 tons in weight, safely in a combined space. 
Their current solution meant that they needed four of the largest machines that they currently produce. However, using Solid Edge and Solid Edge wire and harness design, they are now able to produce a machine large enough to allow them to only need two to be able to move a wind turbine blade with the ability to daisy chain them together so that it's being controlled by a single operator. Now to finish this off, Master Remover have been kind enough to show or to share a video with us showing these in action. And as I mentioned, they have now managed to be able to produce a machine that's able to be daisy chained to one other to move that wind turbine by a single user. As a summary of what we've seen today, but we have shown you how to create a schematic and harness directly within Solid Edge wire and harness design, how to intelligently simulate those designs through design rule checks, and use the connector mode to integrate both electrical and mechanical sides together. We've also shown you how to create reports in both connected and disconnected modes. Thank you for watching this session. We hope you enjoyed. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to get in touch with your one PLM account manager.